from Greece to Sicily to Algeria and to Turkey. Raging wildfires amid heat waves, described as virtually impossible without climate change. That's according to the World Weather Attribution Group, a body of climate scientists. And so as this burning summer continues, through these darkened skies, a devastating picture emerges of our future, our changed environment. Let me state the obvious, that in the face of what the entire planet is facing, especially the Mediterranean, which is a hotspot for climate change, there is no magic defense. If there was, obviously we would have implemented it. For a week now, Greek authorities have been fighting wildfires here in Rhodes, from water bombs high above to residents doing it themselves. Some with extinguishers, for others it's more rudimentary, using nature to stop nature. Amidst the desperation, a sense of shock, as the temperatures rise once more today to above 40 degrees Celsius. I was born here, I'm living here 50 years. 2008 it was a worse, a big fire. But not like this. This, this destroys all the islands, burn all the islands. It doesn't stop. This is the bad thing. It doesn't stop. There is no end. Even to help carries risk. Today, a plane dropping water on the Greek island of Evia crashed into the hillside. Both pilots on board died. More than 20,000 people have been rescued from Rhodes and Corfu since the weekend. That's the largest evacuation in Greece's history with some 3,000 tourists among them, such as Paul and Corrine Watson from Cumbria, who sent us these images from when they and their two boys arrived at their hotel in Southern Roads. And then about three or four hours later, we got a knock on the door saying, you need to evacuate, just grab your essentials and get to the entrance of the hotel. Um, so that's what we did, got to the entrance of the hotel and there was a very animated uh, Greek chap shouting, you need to get away from here quickly, don't just stand still. Um, either run or get on a vehicle. They managed to get a boat to the north of the island and finally flew home yesterday. You can get frustrated with the fact the holiday was spoiled, but the people of Rhodes, are, you know, I, I don't think the casualty count was high, but homes have been lost, livelihoods have been lost, and they'll be experiencing the impact of this for, for years to come, and I feel desperately sorry for them. The Foreign Office still says it's safe for people to visit Greece, though they should check with their airline and hotel beforehand. Sicily's capital does not appear safe, with the airport at Palermo closed with wildfires surrounding the runway. Monday saw temperatures of 47 degrees Celsius on the island. From the burning orange that brings such fear at night to the grey ashen aftermath that reveals the horrible toll. This is across the Mediterranean on the Algerian coast where at least 34 people have died. There were five people in here. The man was coming to help. And in this car, there was a family of seven from Algeria. For those that survive, little help or hope. Amar and his family survey what's left of their farm, their livelihood, as they recall an event like never before. This fire is not normal. It's not normal. It jumps from one place to another place. I've never seen such a fire. Yet as parts of the Mediterranean swelter and singe, this is the scene further north. Milan experienced a fierce, sudden storm. Heavy rains are strongly correlated with climate change. All this surreal, yet ominous. Many streets are blocked, many old trees have fallen, and who knows how much more damage there is. It's a shame. We're living through a difficult time. A realisation shared by so many across this continent and beyond of a hostile new era. Today's report, which said this was all impossible without climate change, warned that these scenes could become yet more common. Kieran Woodley reporting. Well, earlier I spoke to Kostas Taraslias, the deputy mayor of Rhodes. I began by asking him if it was painful to see tourists leave the island in the middle of the holiday season. Yes, it is. But uh, we try, them, try to, to offer to them uh, a little bit of safety. Uh, we couldn't leave them uh, alone. It was uh, quite dangerous with the fire. So we operate a huge evacuation operation 
to bring them in safety. Mm -hmm. Actually, two two hundred and twenty thousand beds uh, is the capacity in rows, and in this area, it's only eight thousand beds. That means that the most of the tourists in rows continue to having uh, lovely vacations. So you're saying to people in Britain who are still thinking of coming to Rhodes on holiday, carry on, come here. Absolutely, absolutely. Even the time that uh, we had the fire in Rhodes, uh, no one understand what happening. We didn't have even smoke over the island. Uh, it was in the heart of the island in a forest. And unfortunately, because of the winds on Saturday, uh, the fire reached this, uh, this place. Uh, all the other people didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And even when we had the evacuation, all the other people was in the beaches, was in the bars, in the restaurants, and they enjoy their holidays. The, the pictures that we're seeing on our television screens from Rhodes are infernal, they're dramatic. This is not the kind of place you want to go and spend a holiday in. Uh, of course, it is uh, dramatic because it happened very quick. It happened on the afternoon. But uh, the most important is that we didn't miss any one of the people. Tourism is the most important thing in our economy. 95% of the Rhodian economy is tourism. And we know very well that uh, our clients should be satisfied. And uh, we do the best for, uh, for that reason. I have to say, seeing those pictures at the weekend, of people panicking on the beaches, you know, running away from the planes, leaving their goods and their passports behind in the hotels. That is not exactly a brochure for coming to Rhodes on holiday, I'm sorry to say. I mean, it's a wonderful island, but you don't want to spend your time, you know, in that kind of danger. Yes, it's, uh, it's exactly the same pictures like a tsunami many years before or the fires that happen in Spain and all around uh, the Mediterranean many, many times. Uh, it's uh, very rare for us. It happened, but uh, it's something that happened once, once in a while. Right, because the, scient the scientists are telling us that this is now the new normal, that these extreme heat waves are going to be something that we have to live with. Are you worried, finally, that this you know, this sort of extreme heat is going to wreck your economy in the future? Uh, no, because it's something that happens all around the world. Uh, actually, we had rains on May and the first days of June. Uh, that's something uh, new for us as well. And we have seen places in the North Europe that was very hot as well. Uh, that's something that uh, all the people now in the world will have to think about and to care more about the environment. I have to say, finally, that everyone we've spoken to, every tourist has said that the people of Rhodes been, have been absolutely fantastic in helping British holidaymakers. So I thank you for that and thank you for this interview. Thank you very much. The deputy mayor there in Rhodes, but we've seen record breaking temperatures across the world in the last few days from Asia to North America to the Antarctic. Our climate reporter Simon Roach joins me now. This clearly isn't just a warm summer then, is it? No, and, and some people have been saying, look, we, we've had heat waves before, weather changes, um, really asking if this actually is climate change. But as Kieran just alluded to there, um, today a respected group of scientists from Imperial College put out a study which said, look, the heat wave we've just seen in China was 50 times more likely due to human caused climate change. And the heat waves we've just seen in Europe and North America were virtually impossible without it. Now, I spoke to one of the study authors earlier on today. With the same certainty that we know uh, the world is not flat, we do know that climate change played a role. These events are not rare anymore in today's climate. Uh, it's in, in the Mediterranean, it's sort of a one in 10 year event. In China, it's even a one in five year event. And as long as we continue to burn fossil fuels and global temperatures continue to rise, these events will get even more frequent. So look, for some, this may not be very surprising, but for others, it will be. The science is very clear. These are climate impacts, and they're going to keep getting worse as long as we keep putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. 
Now, we've heard a lot about the fires recently, as you can imagine, but uh, not just land temperatures that are concerning scientists, is it? No, you're right. I mean, uh, what's happening on land with heat is actually broadly in line with projections, but it's actually what's happening in the oceans which has really alarmed scientists. Um, now, if you look at this uh, graph here, most of these lines are average temperatures for the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. But if you look at this red line here, this is what's been happening today. So an enormous jump because we've actually had a marine heat wave at the same time, similar to what we've seen on land, but the, the difference from the norm is actually much bigger. Then if you go to the other side of the world, to the Antarctic, this graph here shows the, the, the sea ice cover in the Antarctic. Now, sea ice is different from ice shelves and, uh, uh, and others. Oh, we've lost that. But um, the, the, there's an enormous change actually going on in the Antarctic now. Right now. We've got okay. it back. So you should be able to see that the, the, there's a red line which just shows an enormous change similar to the Atlantic Ocean. Now, uh, what's happening in the Atlantic, what's happening in the Antarctic aren't directly linked. They are what you'd expect with climate change, but it's the sheer size of this jump that the scientific community has been really confused by. Uh, some other news which broke this afternoon said that maybe the jet stream, another major weather system in the northern hemisphere, uh, is less stable than we thought. It's really difficult to overestimate just the size and scale of the changes we're seeing in the world right now. And I want to just finish with this because I, I spoke to a researcher from the British Antarctic Survey earlier today that told me the ocean is entering a new state. Whether it can recover from that or not, we just don't know yet.